the divisive nature of code <laughs> policies? Oh, f yeah. Who's he talking to? Oh my God. Isn't this that f psycho? Ion Hersey Elite. Yeah, this chick is f insane, dude. She's like the super reactionary anti-Muslim uh, lady, isn't she? So she got she got uh, female circumcision and obviously uh, talked about how horrific that is. It's her uh, Now she makes her living off of just straight up, literally fucking just talking about how... Um, She's the Candace Owens for Islam. That's it, okay? She's literally the Candace Owens of Muslims, all right? Which is funny because you are about to find out how f r slash atheism Turks are. Just wait. All of my American watchers and my international audience think that they're being like edgy atheists. Just wait. Turks on the internet are the most edgy f atheists or act like they literally sleep with a copy of Quran and nothing in between, okay? They're either the edgiest, like the worst atheists, like literally, or or they are, you know, they, they lie and tell you that, you know, everything is haram and they don't touch anything and whatever. But most of the f really religious Turks are not going to be in my audience anyway. So you're going to, you're going to see a lot of fucking insanely uh, anti- uh, anti-Muslim and Islamophobic uh, uh, Turks in the chat right now. That's kind of a racist take, not gonna lie. Are you saying that I'm being racist against Turkish people? Is that what you just told me just now? There is nothing more American than an American person, like uh, an American person telling someone uh, who is making a humorous uh, explainer about their own culture that they are being fucking racist. Americans are so used to fucking colonizing that they literally have colonized social justice, okay? Like, they're so used to colonizing that literally, like, people, motherfuckers at Yale are literally crafting new ways in which they can tell, like, uh, marginalized communities, minorities, people from different ethnic backgrounds, how they should behave uh, and what the best standard of uh, standard operating procedure is. There's this big bad thing from the outside, this virus that's coming to get all of us. We didn't know a lot about the virus, but the more we find out, the more we adapt, the more you would think that some of these intrusions into our privacy, into our liberty, it would stop and we, we would be able to be free. And, and even in some states here, people are still insisting that the government has those powers. My husband is from the UK and I just asked who has been to see your mother, daughter and boyfriend, but they were sitting outside. And why can't they sit inside? And he says, well, the rules haven't changed yet. But there's something in me that asks myself, who's enforcing those rules? And why, in the age of testing, are those rules applicable? Bro, you know, you know he's trying real fucking hard. He's trying so fucking hard to, to like have reactionary people come to his broadcast and pr platform them that he literally had Ion Hersey Ali come on who is not even remotely entertaining and can't even fucking talk. The rules were put in place when we thought it was the Black Plague. I mean, we thought it was going to be like the Spanish flu, and it's not the same thing. It's still terrible for the people that get it and die, and the people that have poor health, and the people that have underlying conditions and comorbidities, but it's not what we thought it was going to be, but we're still treating it like we treated it a year ago. But what bothers me now is that it's not even possible to have a debate about that. Right. Anytime people say you should be suspicious of government, don't give government any powers because once they have that power, they won't give it back. Dude, it's so sick when COVID ended and yet the shutdowns remained. It was so wild. It's so crazy that that, that happened already. Like motherfucker, you live in Texas, brother. What are you talking about? Your state is not over the COVID hump, despite the fact that your governor earlier today announced that there will be no mask mandates going forward. And as a matter of fact, took it one step further, if I'm not mistaken, and made sure that certain provinces or certain uh, localities cannot implement their own mask mandates if they want to, unless you reach over a certain percentage of uh, new COVID cases. Really fucking tight, really tight stuff going on in Texas. And it's because of morons like Joe Rogan. You know, there, there's a, a tremendous drop in cases in Los Angeles, and yet you still can't go to the gym. You have to eat outside, and they just opened up eating outside two weeks ago. Yeah, you know, we, we never understood that. It because doesn't, it doesn't make sense. spread outside. For, for a fact, I know that they did it for optics. Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't spread outside, famously. I'm glad that uh, two fucking brilliant scientists, uh, epidemiologists are talking about how COVID doesn't, famously COVID doesn't spread outside. Listen, the difference is these fucking dinguses think that they're smarter than Donald Trump, okay? This is such a fucking brain dead take that it's literally what you would hear from Donald Trump and make fun of for a while. As a matter of fact, Joe Rogan probably made fun of Trump for saying moronic things like this because i know someone who works with the government who literally had this conversation and this is the alex jones uh uh take oh, I, I got the documents oh, i got my contacts inside 
So they're closing businesses down and they're denying people a living for optics. It's very suspicious that when Los Angeles closed down outdoor uh, businesses because outdoor gatherings were still uh, causing some uh, spread. Suspiciously, uh, in the aftermath of, of uh, the massive peak during holiday season, those shutdown measures also came along with uh, a diminishing uh, a new COVID case rate that Joe Rogan personally just mentioned. But it, that probably happened because, you know, uh, Allah willed it or something, right? Like, I don't know how the fuck that happened. Uh, who knows? Who knows how uh, the Los Angeles COVID cases uh, have, have been uh, on the decline, which Joe Rogan literally just mentioned. But in this case, when you say optics, what will they use that power for then? Because well, the optics they is will be voted out something. of power if they carry on like this. I don't know if they will. Dude, this conversation is so stupid. This is literally just a conversation between two fucking idiots who think they're smart. I don't know how else to describe this. What we are watching is two fucking absolute morons having a conversation thinking that they're actually brilliant. It is so weird watching this and, and millions of people watch this shit. Like, what are you guys doing when you, you think when you like lower your tone of voice and talk slowly that like automatically the things that you're saying are going to sound clear and uh, cohesive analysis in regards to the problems at hand? No, no, no. They're just going to keep getting elected, actually, as a matter of fact. It really does not matter because there's going to be more Democrats uh, than there are Republicans in California. And therefore... Democrats are going to be able to continue exercising their power for no reason other than the fact that they just want to do it for optics. Also, this terrible fear of the virus, the terrible fear of what it actually is. If you go to Los Angeles today and I, when I talk to my friends, they have a totally different idea of what the virus is than if you're here in Texas. Dude, that's not a good thing, okay? The people I've surrounded myself with are kind of fucking dumb about a pandemic, including one of the fucking more famous instances being Dave Chappelle getting COVID very publicly and even giving it to a fucking bartender. Those guys don't believe COVID is real. So, you know, it's just, it's, it must be a matter of culture. It's like, why are you pointing to Texas's uh, situation where El Paso was literally a fucking war zone? not that long ago, as though it is, uh, you know, a, a successful example to follow. People, like, they treat it like it's a bad cold, yeah. which is what it is. Yeah. It kills people, but so does the flu. But we never closed down schools for the flu. The flu actually kills kids. This kills very few children. A tiny, 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 tiny percentage. Minority. Schools are famously owned, operated, and cleaned, and, uh, and, and nursed by children. It's always, this is a fun fact for those of you who don't know. If you go to the state of Texas, schools are very different. It's like the teachers are also children and the children do not have any other family members. So in the state of Texas, when, when a child gets COVID, he can't spread it to other uh, parents because there are no parents. They're all children. So it's like a child to child spread. Just like the teacher is also a child. Just like the janitor is also a child. Like, you know, the principal's also a child. Because schools famously don't have adults working in them is what I'm trying to say. And those adults also don't have adult family members that they live with. And that's precisely why uh, they would never be considered a, a cluster or anything like that. When people have the ability to tell people you can't work, that's very dangerous. Or to tell someone your business is not essential, but Target is. Well, maybe you have a small store that sells goods. Well, you can't open. But this big store, this big chain, why? But well, they're, they... It's like, that's not even fucking true. It's literally not true. If you're a grocery store, it doesn't matter if you're a small grocery store or a big one. It's literally a false statement. You absolutely can keep your fucking grocery store open. It's still an essential business. No, you can make that faulty comparison between restaurants and grocery stores, in which case it's a faulty comparison, but you can make that. Uh, there are reasons for why grocery stores have to remain open when restaurants or at least indoor dining can't. But uh, this notion that like um, there is uh, some kind of qualification for grocery stores, but only big ones and not small ones is so dumb. The reason why he can probably get away with lying like this, though, is because there aren't that many fucking small grocery stores left. It's all retailers, uh, gigantic uh, franchises at this point. You know, there's unions that are involved, like that woman that we were talking about before the show who had a restaurant in Los Angeles and she had outside dining that she, pay she paid thousands of dollars that she probably didn't even have to set this up so she can keep her business afloat. And then they told her you have to close down outdoor dining. And across the parking lot, the television and, and movie studios were allowed to have outdoor dining. Like literally she could walk 10 steps 
and she could be in their outdoor dining and her business is being forced to shut down. What really frustrates me about this, this is a real story, okay? This was a story that went viral and I watched it. Uh, I talked about it as well. What frustrates me about this fucking dumbass story is that it, that that does suck, okay? That does suck. I don't want uh, small restaurant owners to uh, uh, be devastated, uh, especially when they close down outdoor dining. There is a, a genuine problem there. But the real problem, or the real solution, rather, to that problem isn't, uh, you know, open everything. Because, like, that's what we should be doing. If you have to uh, close restaurants, then you have to help them. And the problem is we don't. We don't. The government has no infrastructure to deliver people money quickly and expediently. Uh, the government uh, has, has no interest in giving people money because, you know, they're not massive corporations. And that's the real issue. Also, it's still not a one-to-one -one perfect comparison because movie studios get special privileges because they are testing everyone around the clock, whereas you have no fucking idea who your employees are. They are not getting tested. Or not, sorry, not your employees, sorry. The, the people that are coming into your restaurant are. Here's the thing about lockdowns that have been pretty clearly established. First of all, they don't work. They don't really curtail the, what, they don't really curtail the virus. But what they do do is they force people inside. When you force people inside and you force people to congregate, it spreads easier. Absolutely. It spreads. Yeah. And that's part of the problem. It's what? Dude. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Outdoor restaurants closing leads to indoor restaurants opening magically. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's no fucking way. Dude, come on. There's better counterpoints like, like, than this. He's, he's like not even trying. To take that uh, lockdowns lead to more people staying indoors is probably this. I can't believe it. Like in, in in six minutes, Joe Rogan outdid himself. It is literally the worst take. It's the dumbest one I've ever heard from him. It's it's so it's so weird that like COVID has turned him into a, a one a Karen and then two this like delusional conspiracy lord now. But it does spread inside, and so you force people inside. You tell people they can't work, and they're all congregated together inside. Like, what is he talking about? Is he talking about like a like a multifamily home or something? Like, like who? Where are people uh, getting forced to be inside, but with like people outside of their bubble? What is he saying? Like, when they shut down in in the argument that he's making, it's like you can shut down outdoor dining, but indoor dining and indoor establishments are still open or something like what i think he means that if you don't give people an opportunity to hang outside they will break the bubble and hang out indoors which is arguably more dangerous okay but that's also that's like saying okay well people will then go hang out outside and break the rules and hang out outside limiting random traffic among strangers is the goal that is precisely why you shut down dining okay you shut down uh, establishments where you uh, congregate at with other random people that is how you limit the spread if you are in your own bubble and uh, you have another person who is in their own bubble and those people get together but they've taken the appropriate precautionary measures then yes you are increasing your risk but it's still less risky you're giving him too much credit he's saying now you're stuck inside in your home and that's where most spread happens like an idiot and the government doesn't give a shit about that they they keep getting paid no matter what when they close down these businesses i think the government i think the state i think the the governor and i think the the mayor they should be paid proportionately with the amount of money that's generated by the businesses particularly the businesses that are forced to close you see how fucking quick everything opens up, <laughs> it, opens up it would open up like that yeah. see how quick everything opens up if you give people the freedom to go places wait even that's false by the way that's literally fucking false no that's that's not how that works at all people are still understandably afraid what did he did i miss the point did he was he talking about taxes or something wait what the fuck was he saying i think the the governor and i think the the mayor they should be paid proportionately with the amount of money that's generated by the businesses particularly the businesses that are forced to close what dude who the fuck is this guy hanging out with dude how can he come up with an idea so dumb. It is baffling, dude. How do you support Bernie Sanders at one point and then fucking turn around and have the, this is like crackhead levels of uh, bad ideas, okay? Like it is literally the dumbest thing I've ever fucking, oh, it's probably Elon Musk. Ay, ay, ay. I'm thinking, I'm wondering like who the fuck is influencing Joe Rogan to have like such psychopathic like ANCAP theories that, because they have to be overlooking the negative side effects of that, right? Like if you were to incentivize mayors by like uh, generating profit, you really fucking think that that would be beneficial to the people that are working there? No, you're supposed to be a public servant and only serve the interests of the public. What the fuck are you talking about? If you, if you become a corporate CEO, then, you know, that mayor will become literally everything you despise about mega corporations. That's how you get fucking slavery, okay? 
make the mayor uh, uh, tie, make the mayoral uh, salary tied uh, to the uh, to the profit margins, dude. How is the same guy that shit on Dave Rubin for for uh, his his idiotic like libertarian takes? You can stay home. You can social distance. You can wear masks. You can exercise in the park, out in nature, but you can't because the park's shut because yeah. they're worried about COVID. Like th these are some of the rules that the people have had to deal with over this past year. Yeah. L nonsensical rules like you can't go to the park. You got you can't go to the beach. Like, it's nonsense. Bro, have you seen the fucking beaches? Like, I know why. Here's what happened. Okay, here's what public officials are supposed to do. They are supposed to keep the parks open at first. And they're supposed to keep the beaches open at first. And they did. And guess what fucking happened when you kept the parks open and the beaches open? People were like this at fucking beaches, dog. That's precisely why. And this happened a year ago, by the way. I don't know why we're still having this conversation. Unless, like, the DMT fucking eroded his prefrontal cortex to a degree where like he is no more uh he, he 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 no longer understands what time is like it's just melted completely and he doesn't get time he thinks we're still in like the first day of covid or something it is wild to me that he has this take local governments keep certain things open they want to encourage people being healthy they want to encourage people going outside and being outdoors they did this in los angeles guess what fucking happened no one knew how to deal with the open spaces, and this is what they did when they were outdoors. So they closed them. They slowly opened them when uh, the, the number of new COVID cases decreases. When they say follow the science, well, you're not following the science. Because if you did follow the science, you'd let people do anything they wanted outside. How the fuck did he go? I thought, like, Spotify would keep him on a leash or something. And instead of, like, uh, his, his uh, content changing for the better, it literally got way worse. I really thought that, like, Spotify and, and the $100 million contract he got was going to, uh, I don't know, maybe stop him from nonstop spreading uh, COVID denial and COVID conspiracy uh, theories. And it's it has been worse somehow. He moved to Texas and his takes have gotten... Like, they've gone into overdrive. Like, I can't even fucking watch any of his videos anymore. You wanted censorship, Keck W? No, I just want someone whose content I fucking enjoy to not be a literal mouthpiece with the dumbest fucking ideas possible. This is no longer even entertaining. He's like having straight up propagandists like Ion Hersey Ali. And the only reason why you want to act like it's fucking fun is because you assume somewhere along the line a liberal is being triggered. So it must be good content for me. You understand? I, I like Joe Rogan. I, I have liked Joe Rogan for a long time. I, I've been a fan of his. I've met him. I've hung out with him. Like, the, the, the feeling was mutual back in the day. He used to be a fan of the Young Turks. And throughout the years, uh, it he went up and down on the content uh, uh, pipeline where he was responsible for a lot of uh, alt-right people uh, gaining prominence. And uh, that was not great. It was pretty fucking shitty, as a matter of fact. But uh, ultimately, it was like normalizing around the... You know, around this time last year, Joe Rogan was like going back to at least having some like leftist figures on a show and shit like that, even though he still had a bunch of dumbasses who he agreed with on the show as well. But now it is gone to the I mean, he literally fucking kicked it into the next level. OK, this is like an uninterrupted sea of idiotic fucking takes, especially because of the covid shit. Yeah, he went from fucking having. OK. The epidemiologist, epidemi epidemiologist that Joe Rogan had on his show before CNN, before MSNBC, is literally a part of uh, the, the Joe Biden team of, of uh, pandemic experts. The person that Joe Rogan had on his fucking show before anyone else to warn about COVID literally is on Joe Biden's team, okay? That is how legit that person was. He went from having Michael Osterholm on his show to talk about the pandemic when people weren't even aware of what the fuck was going on to having Ion Hersey Leon specifically because she says the right things that, you know, uh, that uh, dumbass reactionaries agree with, especially in terms of Islam and like, I guess, government control or whatever. And, and just like denying COVID straight up every fucking episode. When they say follow the science, well, you're not following the science. Then why you did you have Michael Osterholm on? I, well, I guess he's never had him on ever again because I don't know. He likes this more probably. I, I assume he just likes this more. He, he must benefit from this. Uh, he can't be this fucking stupid, right? Like he just probably benefits more from, yeah, he, he followed and then unfollowed the science. Yeah, he literally was like, yeah, I was following the science, and then I decided to unfollow the science. You know, me and science are no longer friends on Facebook. He has so much money, he does whatever he wants. Yeah, but that was what was, like, kind of wonderful about Joe Rogan, is that, like, he had fuck you money, and he, he had a level of comfort that, like, he didn't have to abide by the rules. He didn't have to suck up to anyone originally. 
But now it seems like he's constantly toe sucking. He went from toe sucking uh, Milo Yiannopoulos and the like, all, all these fucking reactionary dumbasses because of uh, Sam Harris and whatever, to uh, toe sucking Elon Musk and somehow becoming even dumber than before. Now it's like, if I want to hear all of the stupidest takes that Elon Musk has, I don't have to go to Reddit or uh, I don't have to go to fucking Twitter. I can just hear it directly from Joe Rogan, which is so shitty. He's right. Closing beaches and parks is not following the science. The science has shown outdoor transmission is not an issue. Dude, you are so wrong. There is no instance where like a, a specific area just automatically becomes a COVID free zone. You're wrong. Outdoor transmission is still a problem. Comparatively though, it is not as big as a risk as indoor dining or being indoors. You are so fucking incredibly wrong. I don't know why you could be so wrong. Well, I do know why you could be so wrong because of fucking people like Joe Rogan, because there are actual researchers and actual experts literally trying to get people to follow the science every fucking day, but you don't want to listen to them because they're fucking boring and they're nerds and they're telling you something you don't want to hear. So you'd rather listen to Big Ape Man. Big Ape Man, tell me. Outdoor, no risk. I do outdoor, no risk. Big Ape Man, tell me. Make me feel good. That's why you don't want to listen to the fucking epidemiologists who say like, listen, outdoors, uh, outdoor protests were not gigantic clusters because when you're outdoors and if you're masked then the likelihood of transmission is going to decrease it's not going to diminish it's not going to be zero but there is still a a uh, a factor there is that is still a very real risk problem is when you open the fucking beaches it's not people following the six foot uh you know six foot distance shit it's not people following the fucking no uh you have to wear a mask shit it's people literally packed on top of one another like idiots so do you think parks should be closed indefinitely no i don't I don't think parks should be closed indefinitely. Also, I'm pretty sure that I'm uh, pretty sure that parks are open right now. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about, too. That's the other part. Like parks and beaches are open in California right now. No, not Disneyland, dude. What the fuck? See, this is why you, we can't have nice things. Do you want to know why? Because this is why. Because Disneyland is not a fucking park. OK, Disneyland has a multitude of indoor fucking areas, especially because like you still need to go out. You, you, you go through outdoor areas and then indoor areas, but you are literally around hundreds of fucking people, thousands of fucking people that are coming from all around the, the world in some cases. It is literally a cluster. The difference is your local fucking park being open between Disneyland. That's why we can't have nice things, okay? I say parks are open right now and the motherfucker goes, well, Disneyland? What we are now seeing, and it is absolutely horrifying, is that you let one side, the side that's speaking for lockdown, invoke science and say the science says lockdown but the other scientists who are saying no not so fast and those ones are not yeah it's really frustrating because um you know the scientists that are in charge of uh declaring this like a public health emergency all seem to have a consensus on like what to do we also have you know uh examples of successful examples of uh uh you know cities states entire governments following the example set forward by uh those scientists but then the chiropractor on my Facebook feed keeps telling me that it's all a lie. So I don't know which scientist to listen to. I mean, come on. Why can't we listen to both sides of the COVID science? This is really genuinely frustrating. On the one hand, you have medical professionals and researchers who have dedicated their entire lives to this and also countries that are following their, uh, you know, following their strategies and successfully mitigating COVID spread. And then on the other hand, you have, you know, sexy TikTok COVID doctor who is uh, breakdancing while telling me that, uh, you know, Bill Gates is going to put uh, a demon semen in my bloodstream. I don't know which part of the science to believe in. The other part of this that, like, I, I have to bring up is the reality that Almost every single one of these people that is running on the, uh, you know, come on, open it up already, open it up already. Come on, the science is not clear on it. Almost every single one of the people that like straight up run with this propaganda right now used to say that the COVID numbers are fucking inflated. So why would we ever take them seriously? Why should we ever take them seriously? I do not understand why the people that literally fucking ran with the COVID numbers and COVID deaths are inflated and it must be something else with no fucking uh, reason as to where those numbers are coming from, by the way. Why was there such a gigantic increase in deaths? Uh, inexplicable, of course. Um, why would we ever be charitable to those people? Like, why should we? If you're consistently fucking wrong, then, then why should we be charitable to what you are saying now? Yeah, Crowder was like the number one advocate for the COVID numbers are fake. The worst thing that the government did was lie about masks in the beginning. 
or at least like present false information about Maz, whether knowingly or unknowingly. That was the worst fucking thing they could have done. And since then, motherfuckers of like motherfuckers who have literally made a killing lying about everything have seemingly been able to get their idiotic followers to literally continue advocating for just mathematically the wrongest fucking information that you could find to then turn around and say, well, Fauci's lied about math, so there you go. Uh, okay, there you go. All right, they were wrong. They were fucking wrong. And they've been right since like, you know, April of last year. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, Fauci admitted to lying about masks to keep them for the frontline medical workers. I can understand why, because of that people are skeptical of what he says. Fair, that's fair, that's fair. That was part of the reason, okay? And it is fair to be upset about that. I think that is fair to be skeptical about that. But if that skepticism does not extend to random guy, you know, brave truth teller, fuck my ass, uh, a chiropractor on your fucking Facebook timeline, then you're not doing it right. If you're going to be skeptical of a government official who has dedicated his life to, to uh, uh, epidemiology and like, you know, uh, mitigating uh, uh, these disastrous fucking uh, pandemics and, and stopping the spread, you're going to be skeptical of that guy, but you're not going to be skeptical of the guy who's fucking putting on a, a nurse's outfit. So automatically he must be the foremost authority on this because he corresponds to your own personal biases. Like what the fuck?